Block two included secure top and concrete bottom and sufficient strength and height to prevent the animal from escaping or reaching any part of his body over, under, or through. Wow, this is the cell block eight for this dog. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. It's a 10 by 10 top dog uh, kennel. So the paddock and bottom can't can dig out, can't can, can, can come out. So this is going to, we're actually going to be fixing this right here because we won't have, through, through the uh, mechanics of the ordinance and the revisions, we won't, you know, we're, we're, we're really sure we're not having dangerous animals in the city at all. So that's the answer to that. We're going to fix that. Okay, here's another one. Uh, did I ask that adequately? I think so. Here's another one. As a... Um, as a homeowner, I live, I have dealt, as a homeowner, I have dealt with a tenant who abandoned the apartment due to, due to utilities, utilities turning off uh, an at-large dog within an apartment. Custom barking, disturbing of the new owner, do the owner have the right to call animal control to take care of it? Yeah, now I, well, we got a couple issues going on here. Okay. One of which is that that's actually off topic from our agenda. All right. Uh, it might be a better question that perhaps uh, Commander Caulfield could answer after the meeting because okay. he specifically could answer that question. All right. And there is a All right. So we just see Commander Caulfield. This is a, this is not on our agenda, so we'll have to we'll have to. Uh, after I'll, this is off topic of our agenda, so we'll have to deal with that. So that you review these first. Put them in order since we can. Will will uh, complaints fall under police or animal control? Who will take action on? <laughs> who will take action on complaints? I, and I believe that that's a coordinated effort between animal control and and. Uh, Either are capable, primarily if it falls under the, the city ordinance, and the control will have the primary responsibility for the new coordination. So it's, yeah, it's very common when a call comes through that you've got a, a dog attacking someone kind of thing, that the patrol officers are going to respond. Right. And they have the authority to take action as well. So it, it really is a coordination. All right. Yes, sir. Our last council meeting, too, that uh, maybe Lynn and I Um, and uh, 
keep in mind that at the Killeen Police Department, anytime an officer fires their weapon, even if they miss the dog, okay, uh, there is an investigation. All officer involved shootings, which is why I go to all of them, is because all officer involved shootings are investigated. And so we look at all the, the parameters, all the things. Sometimes we're fortunate enough to actually have it on video, uh, things like that. It's all investigated to make sure it was what we would call a good shooting um, and that it was handled properly. So that's built in too, somebody's going to come out and yes. respond to something, cap the dog. Yes, sir. Ma'am, what is your name? My name is Jara Smates. I'm the police okay. leader of Okay, thank you. All right, the next question. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to do that right now. I want to say, please recap a uh, dangerous animal process. Dangerous animal is an animal who attacks. That's something we're going to determine or, or okay. at our next meeting. We'll, we'll come up, we'll be working on that. Okay. And as animal is seized and evaluated for 10 days, that's something that we are looking at today is going to decrease. I believe it's going to be, those days are going to be adjusted based off of the fact now that instead of us having, a, uh, instead of someone having 10 days to do something with an animal, no, we're going to take the animal. If there's a call. Right, you, I guess what I'm putting there is a process. Mm -hmm. So the animal is seized uh -huh. or evaluated, however you guys determine that. During that time, someone can file an appeal. Within that have, days. It is as it's set, and as again, I don't know how those days are adjust, but right now it reads if we, it's, if we I'm thinking it's going to read, we, we seize the animal immediately, but it, you would have those 10 days in which to make an appeal to say, hey, this is why my animal is not dangerous, okay. and, and things like that. But what it is, yes, sir. I think, in the way that I have seen these done, what would happen if we go with a seizure in combination with another protection? Generally, when you do that, they will automatically set the court date so that they're in time to serve. Which means when you're served and the dog is seized, you'll be told when your, next, when your court date is. Now, what happens is there's several variables from that could happen. But on one, you go in, you present your case, and the judge will determine it's not dangerous and give it back to you. Uh, you present your case, and the judge says it's dangerous, here's your options. Or you may just not respond at all, and your failure to respond becomes an automatic Surrender of the animals. Okay. Yes. Okay. So during that ten days, at the end of that ten days, if they respond, then it's they, they're going to be in a court hearing. Okay. So then it's considered dangerous. Well, so, then the judge will determine whether it's considered okay, dangerous. Okay. Okay. So that is what is official. So let's say I just want to give an example. Sally's dog gets out. Sally's dog is big. She jumps, the dog jumps up on someone and scratches them and it scares them. Okay? Is that dog, is that a dangerous dog? That will depend on the definition of no that, That's part of what we're trying to go, is define what is seriously dangerous and what is something that would, that although may be an attack, may not fall within the scope of that. Would that be, yeah. Would that, I mean, would it be seized? We don't know yet. We no, that, that's, we're still, okay. that's still in the works. But we don't, I mean, to, like you said, I like what you said about the shooting. Or whatever, ankle bite or whatever. He's got the, he's I mean, way. what if he doesn't have his rabies shot? That and that will be something I believe would be fighting. That that. The, what they, if he bites my dog and doesn't have a rabies shot? They would have to. That's a. Uh, just that, like that may be. Those are going to be violations. They may not be dangerous dog violations. They're still violations. But, and, and, a, being at large is for being unrestrained. Well, I, I can use at large. Yeah. That's a term is restrained. Uh, but being at large is a violation. Not having rabies shots is a violation. Those two national fines alone is about no. Uh, it, 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 we, huh? Maybe putting some more violations. Maybe That's putting some more violations good. in there. So it's not that the dangerous dog isn't an all or nothing. There are different components there that are still in place that wouldn't say, hey, you have to remove your dog from the city. Yeah, and there's a lot of variables, and that sounds good. Just, you know, from the public. Dog is if, if, if there's a complaint and it's determined that the dog needs to go, 
the dog is getting seized. Okay, so the dog will be euthanized. No, it will, no. It will be seized. A, it'll be seized. Okay, it will yep. be seized. They go to court. It's a dangerous dog. Johnny says, okay, well, I'm going to take it to my uncle's farm. Then take it to your farm. Okay, well, what if he keeps it at home? Well, he won't be able to. Then he has my other violation. Then he's in violation. And I'll be back in his front door with a seizure. Okay. Yep. <laughs> All right, and then it says something about searching. 6 127, the search and seizure. Does this require a warrant? That's well, the seizure we're talking about, that is a warrant. Yes. When we say seize, we're talking about the affidavit that leads to the court issuing a warrant to take the dog. I mean, because you're coming into someone's home, and, yes, and I mean, this goes into a government thing. And yes, it is. You're, you're going coming in. into someone's home, and you're taking their property. Yes, ma'am. You will not have an option if we go to proclaim it dangerous. You, you will be issued, a search warrant will be issued to seize that animal. Um, so there will be a warrant? Yes, so there okay. will be a warrant to seize that animal. And that warrant gives us the authority to hold it pending the court's decision. Right. Two visits to the bench. The first visit to get the search warrant and the seizure. Yes. And the second uh, visit to the bench to determine the, the animal's dangerous state. It's final disposition. Got it. So okay. more, more court involvement, not less. Yes. The next one, I like this one right here, out of curiosity. If someone breaks into your house and get bit, is the dog <laughs> going to be considered dangerous? That's going to be considered, in my book, a good dog. And whoever breaks into your house is going to be considered uh, for, very fortunate. That's all he gets is a dog bite. <laughs> that's, that's going to be that term that will still always remain in there, which is with cause. With cause. Yeah. Um, with cause. Which is different. Keep in mind that we have patrol dogs, and they sometimes yeah. bite people. That is considered with a cause. The, cause. <laughs> and the other thing is if the animal is on its own, it is in its environment, and you invaded its environment, it did invade yours. Under all the definitions of dangerous, every animal has left that controlled environment. Yes. They are at That's large when the bite by the event occurs. That's so not that case. Does, but does every bite that occurs at large fall under the category of without cause? If the dog is at large and somebody does something the problem is the dog is not is that large. Exactly. The large is not really even. He, yeah, he, he doesn't get that protection. Okay. He's at large. Large. Uh, I mean, I, I suppose there could be if you've got your dog on a leash and everything's legal the way it's supposed to. Which technically then he wouldn't be at large. Right. Exactly. But, but if he's on a leash and somebody yeah. comes up and tries to attack you and your dog bites them, then clearly that would be okay. But you're right, it's not at large. It's right. not at large. Right. But if he's uh, on a leash. If he's on a leash, it's not at large. Yeah. And if he gets out of your hand, you want to chase somebody, uh, then you're going to go. Then we're going to have to hopefully apply a reasonable approach to what's going on that this is a just cause issue. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, actually, there is a provision for the animal could be at large that, that is being taunted is in 6 38. Um, I, L, no person should be hit, strike, or punch an animal, nor shall a person bully, harass, intimidate, or mentally abuse an animal. That was put in there uh, because of animals that are out and about at large that people harass and bother. That, that's, that's what that was for. Uh, so, yeah, you can be charged with. Uh, and it, 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 it stemmed from the, uh, the feral cats being killed by the failed students. Remember, they were not charged with cruelty to animals because they weren't owned, and they changed 42092, and we changed the origin status provision in here to, to help animals that are out that are being uh, uh, used for assets, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why that was put in there. Thank you. All right, and the last question.
least at minimum, based on the budget, we we're looking at two offices. And do they work? Do they work? This is a separate um, Do they work on call like other city officials, like other city workers? Twenty percent. Twenty percent. And I believe that's something we were, uh, as far as uh, as well, something that we were talking about earlier. But anyway, it didn't escape my memory. Oh, right now. This is another one. No, this is the one. Uh, chief. I mean, I told Chief. You get it. You don't get it. We're going to have to get to that one. It's next one. You have this one. Ignore all that stuff. We have one other. And this is uh, no assist. Oh, I have tons of okay. stuff, but we'll just go with one. Yeah, one dangerous. Continuously dangerous. I kind of want to bring up small versus large since it came up. There's been two dogs, probably the last year or so, in my neighborhood that I consider dangerous. A German Shepherd that's killed several cats and a small dog. The small dog is no longer there, but that dog was continually aggressive, aggressive. So I think it needs to be considered dangerous when it's continually attacking other animals every time it's at large. If I'm out walking my dog, it's on the leash, that dog may be under 20 pounds, but if you've got a five or six pound dog, and that dog is constantly in attack mode, it's dangerous. It's dangerous to another dog, it's dangerous to me if I'm trying to break it up. So, Are you saying if it's that large? Well, we're talking about leash. small, yeah, it's okay. constantly, was every time that dog gets out, it's in attack mode. Whether it's at another fence or at another animal. It may be only 15 to 20 pounds, but it is constantly in and attack. And it's not on a leash. It's not on a leash. And it attacked me and my two dogs when I've been walking. So that thing about the chihuahua is not going to kill you, well, that the, the, the constant, the continuous behavior of a small dog and the danger it presents while it's at large, I think we can be seriously and we're going to consider that with everything else, particularly, and, and just right off the top of my head, that sounds like the affidavit process, yes. where you would submit those affidavits and, and, and having those notarized and saying, hey, this dog is this chihuahua or whatever. This, yeah. What's the little toy they look cute? What you call them? The Yorkie Terrier. Yeah, the, I love them little dogs. <laughs> but that one right there, this Yorkie Terrier is continually at my ankle, and that's something we're going to have to you know, the, the, with the with the uh, fur with teeth, fur with teeth. <laughs> that would be the uh, that would be through the, the the affidavit process to to actually build that to say, well, you know what, we really need to do something about that, or when something has to be done, but we're just on paper and you know a sworn affidavit that this dog, you know, we have complaints about it. Yeah, I'm just trying to not let's not draw that line between large and small because an, an aggressive dog behavior is an aggressive dog. My, my question is, did you, did you know where these dogs live? I had reported on them okay. numerous times. Right. Yeah. It's gone now. The people oh, cool. them, but. All right. Yeah. That was, that, that we need to double back to uh, the next item on the agenda would be uh, section 6 uh, 36, which is the restraint. Oh. A uh, committee will need to decide how soon citizens will need to have fences fixed. Timing should be escalated if there is a swimming pool or a dog. All right. That's, uh, let's look at section 6-36, and I believe uh, I believe that at our, at our last um, Last last meeting when we talked about uh, restraint, particularly with something that was more to, with the requirement is of, of, of a fence, fenced in area if you have a swimming pool. I guess with the swimming pool we were talking about taking that section of uh, section eight eight dash three twenty one, um, eight dash three twenty one, and actually applying the same some type of standard. For 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 the animals, yes, sir. I think you have two issues. Correct me if I'm off on this. Number one, you have an issue of no maintained fence. Fence that by city ordinance meets the standard for the field, I feel for the, the code and 
issue. That is the, do we add the dog, dog to a, if you have a substantial fence that's an ill repair, you must repair it. And we added to it, which is what you have recommended. I think we also have to split that into a second issue uh, within chapter six, the restraint, and possibly look closely at, at a penalty side for a non-substantial fence that cannot hold an animal. And I'll example, I had, we had a case just recently, and it's in court right now for a dangerous dog, that has a six foot solid privacy fence, double reinforced, that's really great, six foot's the limit by code, the dog clears it going over both sides. Wow. So the fence is within code, but the dog can, it can exceed the fence's parameters of origin. So that's a, by my understanding from code, that's not, uh, you, can't, you can't use the top pieces. Uh, so that's where you get into, we need to look at two things. I, I with George on the fact that if we have an ill repair fence, get it up to snow. If you have a dog that exceeds that fence's capabilities, and we can show that, we need a penalty statement somewhere in here. And I just kind of give a rough example. For example, if this is a second offense of a dog at large because he, the fence is incapable of re meeting substantial. Substantial means I can't go over it, I can't go under it, and I can't go through it. So if it doesn't, if it exceeds that standard, by the animal's abilities exceed the that fence is harder. So I, I adopted a puppy now the dog is two. Okay. And I'm just now discovering that subject of 36 foot fence. And by ordinance, I'm not allowed to reinforce my fence any more than six foot double wall. And I can't put rollers on the top of that thing to keep him from doopy doing off backwards every time he gets up there, which I'd love to watch him do. Because <laughs> the city ordinance says that it's ugly, you can't do that. So now I've got a dog. It's been in my life for two years. It's part of my family. And I've either got to move. I better rehome that dog because it's going to be a large time to turn around because the city won't allow me to take the measures to keep the dog in my fence. Which is the greatest threat. The fence or the dog in the public when it's at large. You could also self-contain it in the close fence. Right, right. right. There, there are other options right. besides right. just getting rid of it. Right, right. I, I'm right. just saying that if a standard fence won't do it, you can't just allow it to continue to oh, extend. Right, right. So you've got some hard options there. Yeah. You're not going to leave this something on the list. Well, 6 is what I think you would refer to. Yes. So there's actually two elements in there. So you're saying that we need to consider putting something, uh, we need to get a consensus to put something in there that says if your animal does not. An enforcement authority. For example, if your animal jumps this fence and you are found, let's say you are found on two set or more than on the second occasion after a conviction for at large because it, it escapes your fence, or jump the top of your fence. Right, yeah, penalty for not doing something. On the first occasion, it's an at large case. If on the second offense, there's been no modifications to keep the dog contained in some form, that I'm going to not only charge you with at large, but I'm going to charge you with failure to, to maintain a substantial fence to contain this. In other words, your fence is no longer a defendable restraint for this animal. All of, that, all of that, okay, so all of everything the commander said. Uh, I'm not gonna I, I realize it's very vague, but the problem is that you have a fence. In this case, you have a fence that meets the code. The problem is the fence is not substantial enough to refrain. 